Hello, uh, dear viewers. Welcome back to online English and German classes. I hope all of you are healthy, wealthy, and wise. Today we are going to study a thing of beauty uh, written by John Keats. Before I begin with the poem, uh, let's have a short introduction of the poet. John Keats was an English romantic poet. He was one of the main figures of the second generation of the romantic poets along with Lord Byron, Percy, Bishy, Shelley. He was born on 31st October 1795 at Moorgate, London in England. The poetry of Keats is characterized by a sensual imagery uh, most not notably in the series of odes. Some of the most acclaimed works of Keats are Ode to a Nightingale, Sleep and Poetry, on first looking into Chapman's Homer. He died of tuberculosis on 23rd February 1821 at the young age of 25. About the poem. This poem, A Thing of Beauty, is taken from a poetic romance written by Keats. Uh, the name of that epic, it has a total of 4,000 lines. Endymion, it's about a brain-sick shepherd prince who falls in love with the moon goddess Cynthia or Diana. This epic, Endymion, is a masterpiece of English poetry. Background of the poem, A Thing of Beauty is based on Greek mythology. It's about a shepherd named Endymion. Remember viewers, this shepherd is not an ordinary shepherd, but in Greek mythology you will find he was the son of the Greek god Zeus, Z-E-U-S. So this shepherd prince falls in love with uh, the goddess of moon Diana okay Diana in Roman mythology but in Greek mythology that is Selene okay anyway so while this shepherd prince was in search of his love the goddess of moon Diana he happens to meet a beautiful young lady and he falls in love with her later on he finds out that uh, the beautiful young lady was none other than uh, diana herself subject uh, think of beauty is a joy forever it is everlasting it never fades it de-stresses it removes despair hopelessness it gives us reason and hope to live a thing of beauty is a joy forever, its loveliness increases, it will never pass into nothingness. The poet says that a thing of beauty is everlasting, its loveliness never decreases, rather it increases with the passage of time. But we keep a bower quiet for us and a sleep full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing. The poet says the uh, thing of beauty is like a bower. It lies like a pleasant, relaxing and a comfortable place giving you shelter and that gives you in good sleep, in good dream, in good health, in good breathing. Therefore, on every morrow are we raising a flowery band to bind us to the earth. That's why we every next day or every morning or every tomorrow, every next day, we make or we weave a flowery band, a band of flowers and with that band of flowers we bind ourselves to life, we bind ourselves to the earth. Earth means the beautiful things created on the earth or our attachments to the worldly 
things the beautiful creations okay are attachments to the earth spite of despondence of the inhuman dearth of noble natures of the gloomy days of all the unhealthy and over darkened ways made for our searching so in this picture you see all kinds of negativities the poet says that if there is no beauty in the world what we have we have all kinds of hatred and hopelessness and uh, that uh, um, uh, bankruptcy of moral values the lack of good and noble people the sad days the world full of diseases and all kinds of negativities and covid 19 of course mm. yes in spite of all if you see that so in spite of all the wall for a wall which is full of all kinds of negativities yes in spite of all some shape of beauty moves away the pall okay so here the poet says that here Paul, uh, that uh, means the dark cloud, and here it is used as a metaphor for the dark cloud of sadness and misery. So, the beautiful things that God has made that remove all kinds of negativities from our dark and black soul, and it gives us reason to live. it gives us hope to live and what are the beautiful things that the god has made sun the moon the trees young and old which gives us shade to all the human beings to all the living beings sheep is mentioned there of course but that represents all the human beings so all these trees give shade and to all of us that these beautiful things made by god and such are daffodils and beautiful flowers daffodils are there which with the green world they live in and they spread greenery and it makes the whole world vibrant with beautiful colors of theirs and then we have god has created clear rills the 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 stream of Uh, uh running water okay uh, so that is beautiful thing that also makes the world beautiful and that for themselves a cooling covert make against the hot sun and all these bushes and thicket and trees provide shelter to all the living beings okay the mid of forest break rich with the sprinkling of fair musk rose blooms and in the bushes in the forest you find various kinds of beautiful rose flowers with spread fragrance all around okay and such too is the grandeur of the dooms we have imagined for the mighty dead all lovely tales that we have had heard or read now apart from all those beautiful things of nature which god has made you know the warrior the soldier the knights who have sacrificed their lives for great deeds to protect us okay so their uh, history their stories are also very very inspiring they will keep inspiring us forever okay us and the coming generation so these things are also very beautiful the poet says an endless of fountain of immortal drink pouring unto us from the heavens brink the poet says that all these beautiful things that nature has given us they are like endless fountain immortal drink that we will be drinking and the coming generation will be drinking forever and forever and forever that's all now let's see if time is there we can discuss the questions as well question number 1 list the things of beauty mentioned in the poem they are the sun the moon the shady trees beautiful daffodils streams of water dense green bushes of forests funs ferns where fragment 
musk roses grow tales of heroic men who have sacrificed their lives now question number two list the things that cause suffering and pain so they are desire to offend others hopelessness lack of noble men bad health gloom unhappiness darkness what does the line therefore are we reading a flowery band to bind us to earth suggest to you the phrase therefore are we reading a flowery band to bind us to earth it means that we get attached to the beautiful things around us and weave a pretty band which binds us with our life it becomes the reason for us to live now what makes human beings love life in spite of troubles and sufferings the eternal beauty of various things gives us happiness and relaxation it makes us love life despite life's troubles and sufferings why is grandeur associated with the mighty dead the noble deeds of the brave men who have sacrificed their lives are an inspiration for us forever the beautiful legacy of their bravery is the grandeur which is associated with the mighty dead do we experience uh, things of beauty only for short moments or do they make a lasting impression on us according to the poet a thing of beauty is forever everlasting even if we see it for a few moments it has a lasting impression on us and its beautiful memory stays with us forever it inspires us to live despite the ruthlessness of life what image does the poet use to describe the beautiful bounty of the earth the, the bountiful sorry the beautiful bounty of the earth is described by endless fountain of immortal drink which signifies that god uh, bestows on us with all his beautiful creations which uh, help us uh, live Uh, despite the sad gloomy uh, uh, aspects of life so that life i have given here please read it live okay so that's all for today uh, uh, one thing please uh, dear viewers be advised that some of the words i have underlined dear viewers i have underlined some of the words like bower so bower is a pleasant place a relaxing place it can be plants or something so please go through this then uh, important words morrow you have it is not in use nowadays it is an archaic word okay of old english okay uh, so morrow is tomorrow reading is making something new spite is here a desire to uh to offend or harm somebody despondency is that hopelessness and death is uh, d e r t s death is that um, uh, shortage or scarcity then we have fall here fall is that uh, uh, dark cloud okay here it is used as a metaphor for dark cloud for uh, uh, of dark dark cloud of uh, sad uh, sadness and sorrows then we have sprouting is that uh, uh, mushrooming that uh, sprouting means uh, growing a shady boon shady boon that uh, it refers to all the trees green trees that gives us shelter then we have rills rills uh, are uh, uh, st streams of running water covert is to cover or to protect then we have <coughs> grandeur is greatness and dooms that deals with that refers to death and destruction then we have heavens brink so heavens brink here that is refers to uh, immortal uh, fountain or divine fountain so that's all for today thank you very much god bless you all and please keep praying for me thank you